Jeremy Corbyn has asked Labour supporters to embrace the EU warts and all in his first major speech ahead of June's in or out referendum. The Labour leader has in the past been critical of the European Union but says he wants to fix it from the inside. But he's already been forced to reject claims that his support is half-hearted. So is Mr Corbyn's support of the EU genuine? That's the question that we are asking. This afternoon, two people to discuss it with us, Aaron Bastani, the co-founder of Navarra Media, and Sonia Soda, uh, chief leader writer for The Observer, and Ed Miliband's former advisor. Good afternoon to both of you. Thank you for joining us on Sky News this afternoon. Sonia, to you first of all, if I may, what did you make of his speech today? Was it, um, in, was it absolutely 100% copper-bottomed that he wants to stay in the EU? Well, I think it was a very good, solid centre-left defence of the EU based on jobs and investment, social rights and the idea that given the big global challenges we face, like around climate change and terrorism, we're better working together with the other countries of Europe rather than leaving and being on our own. Um, there's been a lot of talk about whether, the, uh, whether it was a sincere case uh, for being in the EU. It did feel sincere to me, I have to say. I watched the speech. Um, Jeremy Corbyn isn't a politician who you see make big political set pieces, very impassioned, personal pleas to voter, voters. I would say it was a speech, um, you know, delivered by Jeremy Corbyn in the style of Jeremy Corbyn. So for me, it it did feel like a, a sincere case, and I think there'll be lots of Labour MPs and lots of people in the Remain campaign who will feel very relieved that Jeremy Corbyn and said this came out and said this today, particularly in light of the fact that there's polling evidence that Jeremy Corbyn and what he thinks could play a really critical role uh, in deciding the outcome of the referendum campaign. What did you think, Aaron? The fact that he talked about Labour Party, the Labour Party thing this the Labour Party thinks that as opposed to I did you pick up anything from that I was chatting to Chucker and Muna. he said he's completely convinced that he's on side hard to tell isn't it I mean it goes against everything we know about this gentleman in regard to the EU he voted against it in 1975 he um, he's been very consistently critical of the neoliberal aspects of the EU its trade and aid policy its external migration policies over the course of the last 12 to 18 months how it has a the industrializing effect on a lot of member states. A lot of member states over the last 30 years haven't really had industrial policies, with the exception of Germany, of course, because they're members of this thing. Has a huge democratic deficit. The Commission sets trade policy globally within the WTO. The member states don't do it. There's no democratic accountability. He's been very clear about that for the last 10, 20, 30 years plus. It's hard to see how he's gone back on all of that and is now a keen advocate of a neoliberal, undemocratic EU. Watching the speech, it was OK. I don't think it was particularly good. It wasn't particularly thrilling. He came to life in the Q&As, though, so maybe that suggests something of an investment in how he thinks he can change the argument for the better, change the EU for the better, were he Prime Minister. But this gentleman is far, far away from being an advocate, a defender of the EU as it currently stands. And I'm surprised, quite frankly, he's come out and said the things he said. Yeah, what about you, Sonia? I mean, is it raising a credibility issue? A few people are on Twitter tweeting me this afternoon. Dennis saying, Corbyn has fallen in line. Power is the drug. And um, I love pies. Great Twitter handle saying um, he's a hypocrite. He hasn't changed his views on anything for more than 30 years. I, I mean, I just don't think that's the case. I think probably what Corbyn will have done is taken a step back and looked at the benefits and the negatives of the EU. I don't think anyone arguing that we should remain in the EU would be arguing that it's the most perfect institution ever. It would just be naive to think it could be perfect when you've got 28 countries coming together, compromising, reaching agreement on things. But I think if you take a step back and look at whether, um, whether the EU's been good on balance for things like workers' rights, things like tax avoidance, things that Jeremy Corbyn actually really cares about, I think you can say it has absolutely on balance been better. And just to kind of pick up on some of the things that Aaron was saying around industrial policy, it's just absolutely not true to say that only Germany um, within the European Union's really had an industrial policy. In fact, there are some quite strict rules uh, around state aid, the aid that, that governments can give to uh, companies that, that might be from that country. But lots of other European countries do a much better job of, of getting around them than uh, 
Britain does. So I think it's just wrong to say that being a member of the EU is a block to an industrial policy. Look at France, look at Italy, look at Spain. It certainly isn't. OK, Aaron, I will let, Alan, Aaron, I will let you come back on that, but just to be balanced as far as the tweets are concerned, another couple. So one's Alex Liberto. Hello to you, Alex, saying, if we question what people say, why bother saying anything at all? Corbyn is always too honest. Polls show people trust him more, is what Alex is saying. And Scott Burton has tweeted this afternoon. Hello to you, Scott. The man is the only genuine politician in that infestation they call the House of Commons. You can see where you're coming from, Scott. Views change, learn to accept that. So perhaps you'd like to deal with the tweets and indeed uh, the other suggestion that we had there from um, Sonia. Well, regarding the tweets, I mean, the reason why Corbyn's changed his mind, it's a strategic question rather than a, a, an ideological one, I think, on his part. I totally get it. You know, the leadership has had to consolidate itself, particularly since the reshuffle in January, rather than make big kind of risky moves like coming out against the EU membership, coming for Brexit. Last year, John Trickett, who's now in charge of May's local elections, was saying that he wants to head up an out campaign. Owen Jones was saying something very similar. The Corbyn uh, leadership election interrupted that. Nobody expected this to happen, at least for the man himself. And I think that's why we are where we are. He was at Hustings, I was told, uh, during the leadership, and he said, I will probably want to stay in this thing as Labour leader because I simply don't think that an outvote will lead to us leaving anyway. So what's the point of making these kinds of taking these kinds of political risks if they can't even lead to the kinds of outcomes people are talking about. I'm told that I'm good authority and I think that's, that's a reasonable uh, position to hold. In regard to industrial policy, I mean, France, in terms of its industrial base, has been de-industrializing since Eurozone membership. Now, maybe Sonia might say EU membership and Eurozone membership are two different things, but the EU has been on a particular trajectory since the early noughties, which has meant, and the data shows this quite, quite, you know, quite clearly, the industrialization throughout every single member state, with the exception of Germany and a few kind of states around it, more or less, you know, Britain's industrial policy after Thatcher, but also with Blair, Brown was something of an exception here. He had something going on. It never really shone through, unfortunately, was globalization's good. Let's stay in the EU. You know why? Because I can go and buy a tree through at Tesco. I can get an easy jet to Alicante for 60 pounds. That's not an industrial policy. The chickens are coming home to roost. Some of the defenses around the EU, I think, too often are born from especially from the left, the centre-left, a laziness to deal with the big questions about what would British industrial policy be outside the EU and inside the world? What would British trade policy be, migration policy be, outside the EU and inside the world? I think we're restrained, we're constricted by a political consensus, which, yes, is predominantly right-wing. But if the left is only going to be in hock to structures, because otherwise anything else might be, you know, something worse, then why are we in politics, you know? I'd love to open up a restaurant up the road, a cocktail bar. We're in politics to change things. And I think part of that is, if not huge reform of the EU, which I don't think is personally possible, I think it has to be leaving it. Sonia? Well, I think just to come back to the politics of this, I think it was really interesting what your viewer said about Corbyn being trusted on this, because there was actually a new poll out today that shows that um, Corbyn is actually more, more trusted than Cameron on Europe. And I think that's why this intervention was so important. I think there are some questions to be asked, though, about whether it goes far enough in convincing Labour voters to come out and vote um, to, to remain in Europe. And I think it was very interesting that this was a speech made in London to a broadly sympathetic crowd of Labour activists trade union activists who are sort of um, are broadly pro-Europe. We do know, however, there's a significant minority of um, Labour voters who are more Eurosceptically minded, uh, particularly in areas like the North and Midlands that have really suffered as a result of, of deindustrialisation. And I think the question is, was there enough in Corbyn's speech today to be convincing not just um, Labour members who may be leaning towards Europe, but those who may be more sceptical of Europe, um, that they should be voting to uh, remain in? And for me, there wasn't quite enough in the speech that addressed those Labour Eurosceptic voters. OK, sadly, we're out of time. But please, both of you do come back very soon and talk to us further. We appreciate you taking the time Thank today. You. Thank you.